help us bridge the gap and therefore pay their contractors so that we can at least move the roads. Because you remember in, in the Ud, uh, Ud, no, Kenya Kwanzaa Manifesto, the key thing is complete the pending roads. Yet we are unable to move it because the financial situation has not changed. Now, that is in terms of construction. What happens to the 6,500 extra roads that were constructed at that period of 10 years of the previous administration? What happens? Those roads are not being maintained. So we are increasing the network of the roads. At the moment, we are lucky to have a few roads that uh, development partners are supporting under the Northern Corridor Project, for example, the road of Modakashi all the way to uh, Mandera, which have, uh, with a few sections in between still looking for contracts, uh, some roads that were going to Turkana on the other side, the road that comes from Isibania to uh, Migori there. All these uh, to it comes from Isibania up to Kisi. All those roads are now due for maintenance, but they don't have maintenance money. Let me tell the nation that this is the first year that we had to suspend contracts because there is no enough money from road maintenance levy to maintain your roads. Kenya is now grappling with the idea of what we do with recently advertised roads for maintenance. People are asking. Somebody was calling me in the morning. The road between uh, uh, Magadi Road, that is between Galeria to Kiserian, it has portals. And it's called, man says, Waziri, why can't you put, you know, maintain these roads? And Kenya used to maintain it for two years now, we are not maintaining it. Why? Because we are unable to meet the budget. The road network has increased, the road maintenance levy has remained stagnating for eight years. You have some roads that are unable to be covered over the years. So we are facing uh, an actual real problem of financing uh, these roads. Let me tell you even more, a more painful story. The, of the roads of 10,000, most of them were in Kera. Kera, by structure of the, of the Roads Board Act, does not have money for maintaining roads. Because the money that's allocated to care at 22% of the road maintenance levy and the 10% road maintenance levy are maintaining the Maram roads. So there is no ring fence the amount that takes care of Kenya rural roads, roads that are tarmacked. What has happened? Those roads, even some which are still under construction, has not been completed, are worn out before they are completed. If you come from Kajado, for example, you know the road of Im Imaroro to Isiara, yeah, in Kajado. Portals everywhere. In fact, many people are saying, why don't you just remove the tarmac and level it to Maram so that we don't have to suffer portals? If you come from Nyandaro, for example, you know the road of Boyman to Pasenga. It is completely like it was never constructed. Portals all over. If you come from K Nakuru going to Bomet, the worst road of Silibuet to Olenguruani. It has huge, huge, huge portals, you know, along the road. If you come from Kisi, you know Kigonge Road. It is, it is in the same situation. If you come from Meru, the Coca-Cola Road has a problem in that town. If you come from places like uh, Nakuru again, Kibunja to Molo. If I speak even from my, you know, recollection, pipeline there to Maunarok Road. The contract has not finished, but the road is finished. On this other end, because that time there was a decision that we do a low volume seal roads in the hope that it was we were going to get the budget to do maintenance. Now maintenance is not being done. What are Kenyans saying? You know, you know the roads of Darajambili to Kibuswa, uh, you know, uh, in Kericho, they have a road there called Chepseon. You have roads all over the country that are constructed under the vol low volume seal roads that are actually getting worn out. So, and therefore, we have to do something. You've been told about aging roads. Uh, I was told roads age and they also die. You know, if you have a road, you say how many years? 20? Yeah, once a road is above 20 years, you need to remove everything and renew it, regenerate it. If you don't, it dies. And, uh, and, and I'm told it dies. Uh, that, that's what the engineers have told me. So you have also urbanization. Rapid urbanization is happening. Across the country, uh, 
uh, when Kura was established, it was always expected to be Nairobi, Mombasa, maybe Kisumu, and a few towns in the country. Now, every county has about three or four or five urban roads that have major demand across the country. And Kenyans are saying, you know, this is a city. Why do you have Maram in this town? Why do you still have Maram in this town? Where is the government? Why is the government not doing it? These roads, we can only be able to do them if we have uh, uh, properly uh, resources that have been raised to do so. And then, of course, the worst part of it is climate change and, uh, and, the, and, the, and the effects. The rains of December, uh, end of 2023, destroyed our roads. Before we recovered the rains of February this year, all the way to April, destroyed even further. We've done our assessment recently. The total amount needed to maintain those roads, one off, is 37 billion. Not to mention now the annual maintenance of the roads. Ladies and gentlemen, our country requires a properly maintained uh, roads. The deficit of the money and you are, you are given that is required to do these ro roads. At the moment, uh, it's projected that we are going to raise uh, in the year 2024, 2025, 79 billion from the road maintenance levy current. But the demands of the same period is 157 billion. So it's like half. What does that mean? Uh, it means that you will require an extra 78 billion in the next financial year. On top of it, for us to at least maintain the roads. This is maintenance. This is not construction. This is not even completion of the pending roads. I'm just talking about maintenance of our existing roads. As such, we need to find a place to raise these resources. You are in your family. You are at home. Your children have to eat. You have to, able to, uh, you have to do your budget well based on the salaries that you receive. Uh, you have to Ask yourself what are the basic and essential needs. So perhaps you take care of the stomach first. Because that can bring chaos. You know? And then you move Kidogo to shelter. Shelter. So you make sure that you have a room and something, something. Uh, and then clothes will follow. Uh, maybe a blanket is important. And then something of that sort. This is where we are at the moment as a country. Even as we sit now, we are trying to see where do you patch here and there and there. And by the way, the people of Kenya are justified to demand better roads because they are used to good things and they believe that government must be able to do good things. But the same good things that we want to de uh, uh, deliver demands us to finance with certain resources. We have suffered the finance bill and suffered 349 billion. We come to maintenance now, we are asking ourselves, how can you raise the maintenance levy to make it close because the seven shillings we are going we are saying we are proposing will bring us to 115 yeah so you are still far away far away from what you require which is 157 but at least when you move closer you are able to save some of the roads our plan is this most of the roads that were uh, like i told you earlier in maroro isiara and others across the country that have really been worn out our target is that in the next, if we are able to raise the resources in the next one year, we should be able to restore those roads immediately. Otherwise, we'll lose them completely. And I can give you an example. This Imaroro Isiara is how many kilometers, Kandia? Almost, almost 80 kilometers. Yeah, I remember. Almost 80 kilometers. Those 80 kilometers, it was constructed using about 3.5 to 4 billion that time of the resource at that time because about 40 billion 40 million per kilometer so you are talking about 3 3 billion almost 3 billion was used do we as Kenyans want to lose the 3 billion put on a road in Kajado in Maroro Isiara 10 years ago less than 10 years ago yeah we lose all of it or we would rather now maintain it by raising 200 million or 300 million that will restore the road and give us also the usage of that facility for the next few years. This is the, the real conversation. And I think, and I, I just want to see with utmost respect, that the conversation that is going on in the country is great. I think it's for us in government who have failed to provide a proper framework 
where the people can understand exactly their needs that we need in every ministry and how it impacts their lives directly. When we are shrouded in these blocks, the people will not be able to make the decision that they want to make because this is their resources, these are their roads, these are their assets. The moment they understand that it has nothing to do with the engineer in the ministry, it has nothing with the minister or the peers, it is their assets. Then the people will own and maintain their assets. And to be fair to the people of Kenya, everywhere I've gone in the country, people are talking about roads, roads, roads. In fact, if there's something the people are insisting in, in this country is that we want roads to be done. And because we don't have now the budget for development, I think the soft spot for all of us to raise resources as Kenyans is to think about the road maintenance levy as an increase. But the people of Kenya have said, no, the economy is not good. You know, the cost of living will go high. If you increase the fuel pump, the price of the fuel at the pump by seven shillings, you are going to create a problem to the country. And it's going to permeate to other costs of living, food, uh, clothing, and other items, transport, because it's a very costly venture if you add it, and it's transferred to transport, then the people is going to pay more. And we have had you. And the people are right. It is therefore for us to retreat, because we cannot sit here and just say we have made a decision. To retreat, read the presentation that has been given to us, uh, listen to the clips that have been shared. I've seen a very good number of clicks on TikTok uh, that people are saying, you know, Murkomen has done this, Murkomen has done that, uh, let's meet at this, this one. And I, I respect that. In fact, I wish I could be in TikTok more and social media more. I should be, being among the young cabinet secretaries, I should be more visible more in the, in the emerging uh, uh, communication sector more than even my senior colleagues because I should be closer to my children in the next generation, I mean the next one, so I should be closer there in terms of that conversation. And I think I have said I am ready and our ministry is ready to listen more. So, P.S., we have to retreat uh, KRB, uh, the road agencies, look at the report and ask ourselves, how do we increase the seven shillings without increasing seven shillings at the pump? How is that possible? What can the government cushion in the energy sector, in the fuel sector, what cost that makes the petroleum higher, we can do away with, okay? And the difference, the benefit that comes to that difference, we can transfer to the roads without increasing the current fuel pumps up. I, I, I hope you, are you people understand what I'm saying? Yeah, so that today, if I was to gazette the uh, fee any time today, next month, December, depending on the time that the public participation process is going to uh, deliver, the answer should be this. The day we announce seven shillings increase, how do we ensure that the people of Kenya do not receive a direct seven shillings increase at the pump? And the people of Kenya paid us to go and think. They hired us to go and think. They pay my salary so that I go and think. So my friends, the DGs, let's go and do what? Think. We have been left with an exam that says, okay, we want the roads. We, they have said two, th three things. Kenyans have said, we want the roads and we want the roads to be well maintained and we will hold the cabinet secretary politically accountable because political accountability is in my office. I, my job is to provide leadership and provide leadership in such a way that it can solve problems. So, number one, that is it. They say they want the roads. Number two, they say we agree you need the money to do for us the roads. So, they agree with us that you need the money. Number three, they say we don't want a high cost of living. So, they want us to have the money they want us to do the roads, but they are saying we don't want to see the fuel prices at the pump to go higher than what it is today. So we have an exam. Uh, in the fullness of time, I have to now go think. I have to consult my colleagues in the cabinet. 
I have to inform the president what we have agreed, what we have uh, discussed, and the views of the people of Kenya. And I have to come back to the people of Kenya to tell them, yes, okay, we found a way of raising the resources without transferring this problem directly to the, to the pump. And therefore, uh, my thinking is that my colleague in the Treasury and everywhere, we have to think. I wish we were discussing, having this discussion when the finance bill had passed. But now we are having this problem discussed when finance bill has failed so that it compounds the problem even further. We could have gone to Treasury and say, cushion this sector to this level for us to raise these resources to this level. But this is, this is why government is there. Uh, people ask, oh yeah, people tell me, oh, you came to the ministry when uh, you are the most unfortunate person. You came here to just stare at the pending bills. It is true. But who said people should go where it is easy? You know, I remember one day in a sermon I preached many years ago. And I was telling young people who are graduating from the university that, you know, when the children of Israel said they were going to Egypt, they were. Yeah. Uh, okay, no problem. You can wait for, <laughs> for a few minutes. Uh, uh, the, the children of Israel, yeah, when they were going to Egypt, the, to, from Egypt to, to Israel, you know, there were 12 spies that came with a report. So, all the ten came and said, that place is impossible. It has Nephilims, it has giants, we will not conquer. We will be finished. It's better to go back to Egypt and we eat the pharaoh's uh, tomatoes and lentil soup and all that. It was only Joshua and Caleb who came back and said, yes, they are giants, we agree. Yes, they are Nephilims, we agree. But we are going there to conquer. Ours is to resolve that problem. So I have a problem in this ministry. We have a problem in the country at the moment with financing of these projects. But ladies and gentlemen, I want to promise the people of Kenya that we were elected not to write another book of lamentations. Jeremiah wrote one. It is enough in the Bible. It is not for us to write another book of lamentations. It is for us who are put in public offices to solve problems. But we must locate the problem. We must understand the problem. And we must be ready to confront that problem. The problem of maintenance of our roads, we will solve it together as a people of Kenya. We and in the ministry will provide leadership. We are going to think and we will come back to you with solutions that will not transfer the prices of fuel. Make it higher than it is at the moment for the people of Kenya. Because we have had you. We have had you. If it means even waiting until an extent when fuel prices are come down, we will wait so that the people of Kenya cannot suffer more because of the economic situation. With those many remarks, I want to thank you. I want to thank the people of Kenya. I want to thank those of you who came physically. I want to thank those who are in social media. Please continue giving your views. We are going to collect, 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 and write a report, and that report will inform the decision we are going to make. Asante sana, and may God bless you. Thank you very much. Based on the program, we get uh, closing prayers from any participant who is willing. My phone.